Mr. Speaker, the Premier has consistently opposed any exchange of resources in the context of ride sharing. This would suggest the Premier is opposed to fair compensation to the individual, such as covering the cost of gas and mileage traveled. But for the ride share, they are providing in their own vehicle. Why is the Premier opposed to an individual other than a licensed taxi driver receiving agreed-upon fair compensation for the ride-sharing that they are providing to others in Manitoba? Speaker, we have uh, regulations in Manitoba that require a person to be a license holder uh, for driving a taxi, a special license. They also have to have their vehicle license. They have to have the appropriate insurance. That protects the drivers. That protects the customers, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we're undertaking a review of taxi cab services uh, in consultation with the industry and the public to look at how we can improve services. The member opposite's proposals would result in people losing employment, full-time jobs. They would result in higher risk to individuals in Manitoba, both people providing the service and receiving the service, Mr. Speaker, and uh, that's not really the way we want to go. We want to have an economy. We want to have a community where people have access to good, well-paying jobs and good quality services. They go together, whether it's in the transportation sector, whether it's in the public sector, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, even while the Premier and his government are opposed to ride-sharing in the context of any compensation, I, I now table a FIPA response, which clearly shows that his government has been paying for ride-sharing since 2006. Wow. This payment involves a membership in a ride-sharing co-op so that he and members of his government can benefit from ride sharing. Why does the Premier say this is illegal when the government is itself involved in paying for ride sharing? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I think the member is referring to uh, an investment in a co op, a ride uh, co op that provides vehicles that people there can then uh, make a an application to drive that vehicle, Mr. Speaker, and uh, provide their own. They drive themselves, Mr. Speaker. What they're getting access to is the vehicle. That's very different than the Uber system. That's very different than the Uber system, which provides part-time jobs, inadequate insurance, uh, rates that go up when people need the vehicle the most, rates that go down when people need the, need the vehicle the least, Mr. Speaker. Let's not kid yourselves. The member opposite is on the record with his leader of the Liberal Party saying they want to privatize liquor and lottery services. Oh, now they want to do the same thing with transportation services, Mr. Speaker. That's not the future of good jobs and low unemployment and prosperity for Manitoba. Right. Most uh, taxi operators are private sector, unless his government is going to take over this as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Premier stated very strongly and clearly on October 26 that it is illegal for a ride share to operate in Manitoba unless, and I quote, they have a taxi driver's license and unless they have a taxi cab license. Can the Premier table evidence that each driver and vehicle being used for the ride sharing that his government is paying for has the required licenses and insurance? Or does he simply have one set of rules for his NDP government and another for the rest of us in Manitoba. As I indicated earlier, there's a review going on of the entire taxi cab industry with consultation of the public, with consultation of the industry. Everybody's committed to providing a good quality service to the people of Manitoba and a safe service, Mr. Speaker, for the people that use the services, as well as a safe service that, for the people that provide the services. That is what we're going to follow through on, Mr. Speaker, and we're happy to do that. I can say to the member opposite, his desire to continue to privatize services in the transportation sector, in the liquor and lottery sector, is not really the way forward. He has a proposal on the table. One of their major election planks is a $450 plus <coughs> million dollar tax reduction to the largest corporations in Manitoba, Mr. Speaker. That corporate tax giveaway will leave no money left for public services, Mr. Speaker. That's the issue he needs to be accountable for to the people of Manitoba and the members of this House, Mr. Speaker.